So in the last video, we analyzed the high frequency model of a cross coupled pair. And in this video, we're going to show how to use it in an oscillator. So we showed that the cross coupled pair, if you draw it out like so, um, it has a negative real input impedance or input admittance. So if you take it and you connect it as if it were a resistor or a capacitor or anything else, you'd get an impedance Z in that's equal to minus GM over 2 times 1 minus 1 over GMRO. Uh, that's, the, that's the real part. And then you'd get a, uh, an imaginary part, which is equal to J omega times CGS plus C db plus 4 cgd and there's a, a one half out front as well so okay that's that's the model of our cross coupled pair but how do we actually use it in an oscillator well um if we just take the naive approach which is what i always do initially because where else are we going to start from uh, let's just connect an rlc circuit up top so we've got a value r you've got an inductor l and we've got a capacitor C. And then we've got our cross-coupled pair. So we just connected like this. And great. Um, that is our oscillator. The only problem is that it does not work. Uh, so <laughs> remember I talked about how we need to have a way of causing a certain voltage to exist across this capacitor initially. Um, so we need to add some initial energy to the circuit in order for it to oscillate. And here, we're only, our circuit is only connected to ground. Um, so there's, there's no way to get energy into the circuit. On top of that, our two transistors don't actually act like their small signal model, because we need to ensure that for them to act like they're in the small signal regime, if you will, um, they need to be biased properly. And there's no biasing in this circuit whatsoever. So what we can do uh, is a little trick. So remember how in the last video we said, well, we've got this neg with this voltage V1 and this voltage minus V1. And in the last video there was a capacitor. So I'm just going to draw it like that first. And we said, if we don't want to disturb any of the currents or any of the voltages in the circuit, then we can rip this capacitor out and replace it with one that's got twice the capacitance value between that node and ground. So there's one connected at node V1. There's one connected at node minus V1. And the cool part is we can do this with resistors too. Uh, so if we don't want the current to change, uh, we want, so V1 minus negative V1 over R, that's the current, is 2V1 over R. Well, if we were to connect a resistor between this node and ground, it would need to have value R over 2, because V1 divided by R over 2 is just 2V1 over R which is the same current that we had initially. So the current is undisturbed. Oops, sorry about that. And similarly, we can connect another resistor to node minus V1, also with value R over 2. So we're going to do that here. Uh, we are going to split this circuit, basically. We're going to split this R, this L, and this C. It's an equivalent circuit. Um, so we're still going to have cancellation of the negative resistance that we want, but we need to split it up so that we can actually um, physically realize it. So this, value, this circuit now has a resistor R over 2. Just look uh, up at the top for a reference. So I'm splitting it. I'm splitting these into two different resistors, two different inductors, and two different capacitors. And now you'll see that the resistance value halves, but remember the capacitor value doubles. That's because the capacitor impedance is proportional to 1 over C, while resistors are proportional to R, and inductors are proportional to L. So Ls are going to decrease by half, capacitors are going to increase by, 
by double. So we've got a value r over 2, l over 2, and 2c. And these are all connected now instead of to the other node, they're connected to ground. And similarly, on the other side of the cross-coupled pair, we've got the same thing, r over 2, l over 2, and 2c. So if you've never seen this kind of transformation before, it can look a little bizarre, but it's, oops, uh, but it's incredibly helpful, and it lets us do really cool things uh, with the circuit. And then this is still connected to the same old uh, cross-coupled pair. Nothing's changed about that. And there she is. Okay, uh, you might say, well, how has this helped us at all? We've just, we're still just connected between ground and ground, but this doesn't actually have to be ground. This one up top can be AC ground, because recall the small signal model is a model that's applied only at AC uh, or changing frequencies. So we can actually connect these nodes to VDD. And now this is starting to look more like an actual circuit. Or sorry, not, not VDD over 2, VDD. Um, so this is actually starting to look like it might work. So we've got a uh, power supply up here, we've got a ground up here, so we've got a way of connecting, uh, a way of connecting these transistors to power. Well, before we do any further analysis, let's just clean up the circuit, because I don't like having floating R over 2s, Ls over 2s, whatever. This is just the way that we got to this. Uh, this circuit and how we analyze it. So if we replace the cross-coupled pair by its its equivalent circuit, we know we've got a minus R in parallel with a C. And then these are connected to our uh, RLC networks, which I'll just represent with a single, uh, single load Z, single impedance Z. Uh, well, we can do the same exact thing that we did before because we know that this circuit uh, from our previous analysis is purely anti-symmetric. So this is V1, this is minus V1. So we can split uh, the R's and the C's again uh, and turn this circuit into two uh, half circuits, if you will. Sorry, this should be our, uh, our impedance Z. Z, and R becomes R over 2, uh, the capacitor becomes 2C, and those are both connected to ground. But remember that R was uh, minus GM over 2 times 1 minus 1 over GMRO. So or sorry, that's, uh, that, that's our 1 over R. Uh, so 1 over R over 2, uh, 1 over R over 2, means we just multiply this whole side by 2. And so we just get rid of the 2. Uh, so our impedance input impedance on each side is actually much simpler. It's just minus GM times 1 over GM RO. So if instead of doing these... Uh, L over 2, R over 2, 2C, if we just re, uh, redraw the whole circuit uh, with some resistance R, because now we get to choose the values of R, L, and C, so they don't need to be half of anything. They can just be values that we, we pick. And then we've got our cross-coupled pair and another R. L and C. And these are just both uh, NMOSs here. These are connected to ground, and then they are cross-coupled to each other. Well, the uh, this guy essentially reduces to an impedance or an admittance of minus GM 
times 1 plus 1 over GMRO. So on this side, in order to cancel out the resistance that we put on this half of the circuit, sorry, these are both connected to VDD, uh, we need R to equal GM times 1 plus 1 over GMRO. And that's simple, like it, it doesn't require any cancellation of twos or anything whatsoever. It's just nice and nice and straightforward. So this is uh, this, this is going to be our starting point for the next video where we'll actually complete the design of our cross-coupled pair oscillator.